Hey guys, welcome back to Hershey's Garage Plus Guns. And today we're looking at this beautiful 2013 fifth gen 4Runner that of course has the tired old stock stereo that kind of needs a boost into the 21st century. Let's throw into radio. So stick around while I show you the ultimate remedy for this boring stereo and hopefully it'll spice things up. Stay tuned. All right, first off, this is the box that it comes in and there is zero movement, so your product is nice and safe. So now let's check the inner box. All right, here's the inner box and this is also packed very good and no movement. And immediately upon opening, you get a warranty cover card, two year warranty, product manual, and all the goodies in here that we're gonna pull out and show you right now. Here's what's inside the accessories bag. And here's the beautiful head unit itself. It comes with a beautiful IPS 1080p HD screen and this beautiful, nice fit and finish silver paint that is throughout. And let's look at the back of the radio. And of course, always put this on the foam that they pack or something else that is cushiony because you don't want to break the knobs underneath here. But it has an external fan. And then your spots for your GPS antenna and your 4G antenna. And then of course, the various corresponding spots that I will show you, plugins to plug in your accessories, and then the main harness goes right in there. And then you have a little fuse right here. And what specific accessories do you get? Well, they thought of everything. Get a nice little screwdriver, Phillips head, two different angled prying tools, plastic, two USB cables, one four pin and one six pin, your GPS antenna, an OEM USB cable for the 2014 to 2023 vehicles. And if you have a 2010 to 2013, you won't need this one. You'll have to use these. Then you have a 4G antenna, a separate external microphone that plugs into this harness right here, which this harness is your extra RECA cables for different things that you might need to plug in. And then you have a sub RCA cable that you can plug in your subwoofer. And then right here is the SD card 4G modem. And to access it, all you do is slide that over open that up push this down very gently and then tap it it'll open up and then the, put your sd card in there close it down slide it forward close her up and you're good to go then you got your all-important main harness which they've already pre-attached your video in for your backup camera, and then your canvas for your steering wheel controls right here, already plugged in, and then your main harness connection right here with the various connectors that go into your truck. And just be advised, some of these will not be used because of course, when you're working on these, you always want to start from the truck and work backwards into your harness right here. So like I said, some of these will not be used. Okay guys, now it's time to go ahead and remove your OEM stereo, but I already have a video on that. So go ahead and click the link down below. I'll have it in the description and you can get right to it. So let's get back to showing you where things go 
on the new radio, what gets plugged in where? We need to transfer some things from the old stereo to the new stereo. These being these clips, which there's four of them, because we're not going to use the smaller white ones because on the new radio, you can see there's only four spots for the clips and no center ones. Then we're going to need the vents and the rollers which open and close fit right here and open and close your vents. And then we're going to need this right here with the cable, which this is your emergency flasher. And then finally you'll need this little top piece here, which comes out right there. Okay. The clips come off just by lifting this tab over on the side here and then lifting this one simultaneously and then it'll pop off. Just make sure that you're very careful with these because they're kind of delicate. Once all four are off, come over and stick them on your new radio on the corresponding spots. And all you have to do is just stick it over there and then press down. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove this emergency flasher cable line by taking out these eight millimeter bolts, there's four of them, and taking this whole bracket off. Now we can remove it from the bracket by taking this little clip off here and pressing it together and it would pop out and this clip right here, you lift up on the little tab right here and then slide off. Now to remove the button, we just go over and there's the little points right here and on the back side over here, right there. And what you do is you'll squeeze those simultaneously together like this and it will pop through. Now remove this clip right here to get the wire out of the stereo and do it the same way just by pressing in and popping out. Just work in reverse putting the new one in and it just goes underneath and pops right in. And don't fear it only fits one way because there's grooves, one on this way and two on this side. So it only fits in that way. And to finish this part off, go ahead and plug back in your cable. Always making sure when you plug them in to pull gently back and forth to make sure that it is actually seated in there. So then we turn our attention to the vents and we want to take out the two Phillips head screws, one right here and one right here, very small using the provided Phillips head screwdriver. Then you want to take these tabs, which are hard to locate, but they're right here. And you pull out on that one and then one right here. You pull out on this, and they're just plastic, and then you want to pull out on the other side, same thing, here, and see where I'm tugging, push out, and on the same on the other side, push out, and then gently rock this back and forth, and it will pop out. And if for some reason, don't be worried if you set them down to do something, they're labeled right hand. And then on the other one, it's labeled left hand. And it's just the reverse to put it right back in. Same thing. You just line these up on these little clips right here. And you pop it in like this. Now it's time to take this plastic piece off by taking these two screws out right here. 
and then lift up on this little tab right here, this side, and then this side right here, and this will come out. Now reinstall the exact same way that it came out on your new radio, same spots, and then you just slide it in. Reuse the same little screws. And now flip over to see if everything lines up, which it does fairly well and make sure your knobs work. Now let's put the harnesses and antennas in, but just remember if you don't need anything, then you can push it off to the side. Don't plug it in just to, ha to have something plugged in there. And make sure that when you put something in, follow the golden rule by putting it in and then checking it to make sure that it had popped in there and it's not going to pull back out. All right, let's start with the GPS antenna and this goes right here. And they take an eight millimeter open-ended wrench to tighten them down, but don't tighten them down just yet, just to make sure that they're in the right spot when you go to put it in the radio. Next is the 4G antenna and that goes right here. Next, we're going to plug in the main harness, which is this guy right here, into this spot here. And then we've got a few other ones we need to plug in. This is for your steering wheel controller. It comes off of the steering wheel controller. And this one goes right here. And then this is your antenna, which goes right here. And then we have another one off this main harness, which is your video in for your backup camera and that goes right here and don't worry you'll know which ones they are because they all correspond to a spot on this little bar right here so you can't mess it up Next, we're going to plug in our RCA accessories harness, which has the plug that goes right here, then the 4G modem, which just hangs out, and then we have this little guy right here off of this, which powers the external fan, and that gets plugged into this right here, which goes to the fan. You'll see that's the only wire right there, and that gets connected into there. And then your mic, which we're going to be plugging in pretty much simultaneously right here, this thing goes in to this. And now it's time to plug in the four pin and six pin USB connectors. And they go in their corresponding spot right here, the six pin and the four pin. Now, like I said, there's going to be some cables you might not use, and this one is not going to be used on mine. It's that OEM USB connection for 2014 to 2022 Forerunners. So I will be setting this aside and not using it. Now is a good time to kind of clean things up, just making sure that they're in their right spot and the connections are all good. They're out of the way. Everything's kind of a little bit tidy. Tighten up your connections here 
with the wrench and I like to take electrical tape and tape up these ends like this where the RCA connections meet and anything that's kind of loose and bobbling around just to make sure that nothing comes loose or nothing's going to be flying around and it's easier to put it in the vehicle and then it's time to go into the truck. So the golden rule before we get started is always work from the truck back to your stereo because sometimes, like I said, there's going to be connections that you're not going to be using. And the first one we're going to plug in is the car radio antenna. And this already has a nice plug in to where we actually don't need to use the one that we got at the an aftermarket kit here. So we can just unplug this because it goes to this little guy right here and we don't have that style plug-in so we don't need that one we can just go directly and put that into the antenna spot right there then we have this little guy hanging over on the side here and that was remember that was your hazard which goes into its corresponding spot which is right here then we have this guy up here hanging out and this is for your factory GPS, which you won't be using. So you can tuck this guy when we get done back in there. Now we have this big guy here. And let's see, this should fit this right here. And out of these, I believe this one is the only one that is left, which corresponds to this guy on my the factory heart or aftermarket harness so the rest of these on the factory harness are not going to be used in my application along with your USB cables you want to if you're using these you want to tuck them inside on the right hand side by your glove box and you can open up your glove box and on the inside there's a little knockout a factory knockout spot right here that you can take this out and run your USB cables through here if you'd like or you can do any position you want this is just where I prefer also with the SD card I like to run that through the side over and through that little knockout also because I like to be able to access this but you don't have to you can just stuff it in the middle there and it would be just fine and the microphone position can be your choice also you can run it through and have it go into the glove box or you can have it run down and come up through here and up and paste it on like the dash right here or you can come up through a little hole in your dash right here and run it and have it stick up somewhere here if you'd like it that is totally up to you and just be advised that if you are hooking up to your oem original camera backup camera on your 2010 to 2013 you might need to do some extra steps and i will put a link below to a video that shows you exactly what you're going to have to do on that so check that out then take your 4g harness and if you want you can unpeel the backing so it sticks and i like to go in and place that right in between the vents on the right hand side and then up so it's in here like this sticking up like that farther back and do the same thing with the GPS go ahead and stick that through the center here and then peel this off and stick that up on the left hand side so now double check to make sure all the connections on your factory harness don't mate up with any of the connections on your aftermarket harness and then make sure that all of the connections that you did connect are double checked and not going to come out and then now it's time to go and plug in your 
negative side on your battery and see if this works. And as a reminder, don't put your head unit in its forever spot because you don't want to have to re-pull it out if something is wrong. But this is what it looks like when it's in and the fit and finish of it in your car. This is what it looks like when you first turn it on. Your home screen displays the time, the date, the what day it is, and then your speed sensor on how fast you're going when you're actually going. I'm in my garage, so that's not ap applicable right now. And then it shows your navigation and where you are at, if you choose to have it on. Then your quick access to your radio And there we go. Then on each side, you have physical buttons that always are staying there, and they are home, back, and you also have a back button right here on your screen. Navi, which is the same as this, but you can go to the bigger screen of that by hitting that, and then we can hit back to go home. And then over on the right-hand side, you have band, which goes, of course, to your radio. And we'll hit back. Then you have media, which goes to whatever preloaded music is on here or whatever videos that you have on here. You can select by hitting settings on here to scroll through whatever you want to have on here when you hit that media button. And then you have phone which takes you to your phone right there, and then you can pair your phone, obviously, or uh, receive calls, your, look at your contacts, um, all the normal stuff, and they're all through here, like starting your phone, looking through your contacts, accessing Bluetooth, and then settings. Now, when you're in your radio, the radio looks like this, and you can, which is very cool, you actually have physical buttons that you can manipulate to turn up and turn down and then to go up on the stations and to go down. You can also do that by hitting on the screen here to do a search. Then you have your equalizer which is built in and you can change those settings. And of course, the bass filter, bass boost, and surround sound. But it's always nice to have physical knobs to change things. Now, as far as the bottom home screen buttons are, this is your navigation. If you have another one preset in that you'd like to check out through CarPlay, you can install it through there and have it come up like that. Or CarMate which here's a little quick tutorial for you to check it out. This is your video in button. If you uh, download movies, um, you can save them and then bring them up on here. And this is the preloaded version that's on there right now. So this is what the screen looks like. Beautiful. And it sounds like this, but a very nice screen. Then you have your navigation. Once again, this is the Google navigation. Then you have Bluetooth that goes into your phone to set up your phone. Then we have the internet, Google, and your search bar, and this is what it looked, the, the homepage keyboard looks like. 
and let's try YouTube and see what that looks like on my page. Hursty's Garage Plus Guns. Press enter and then let's check out one of my videos here real fast. And this was what it looks like on YouTube. And we can go full screen. Pretty good. And then we go into the apps screen, which is this one. And you have on the first page, themes, APK installer, settings, weather, Android, GPS test, aux, Bluetooth, boot animation, car settings, Chrome, and then DSP, fan, file manager, fuel, Gboard, Google, here we go. I go navigation, so you have some more options besides just Google Maps. And then that's where your music's at. And the next one is phone, Play Store, the radio, Spotify, steering wheel controls, T-Link 5, video, and Waze, and YouTube. So let's go over a few of these. Obviously, there's some that are pretty much in every radio that you've seen. Like the Ox, this is where you're going to if you set up an external camera or external DVD player. This is where you'd access it. So you'd hit aux and it would come up on this screen right here. Obviously there's no video second signal because I don't have anything in there. Let's hit back. Then like Bluetooth, I already showed you what that one was. The boot animation. This is where if you have an external device hooked up via your USB, this is where it will show up and you can download your videos and songs. Then of course you have your normal car settings and you can go through a bunch. One of them is air conditioning linkage with auto key, outside circulation linkage, camera track, lighting sent settings, lock settings, all that you can, you can go through. Uh, you have a, a plethora of, of choices there. Then of course you have Chrome. We already checked that out. Then themes, this is where you're going to check to change your background if you want to. And you have a ton to choose from. And of course you have your APK installer, settings, weather. Click that and you have a 24 hour forecast or seven day forecast. Then you have your Android GPS test. You click that and that just gives a quick test on whether your GPS is working or not. Then of course you have your DSP, which is your equalizer. That's how you get there. Your fan options on how you want to run it. Then file manager fuel. This is actually a cool feature. Shows you your average speed, elapsed time, your cruise range and your, or miles per hour. Uh, instead of looking up here, at the dash that you have originally in your truck, you can look it on here, which this just lets you control your Google keyboard and like voice typing, uh, you can turn that on, which it already is. Next, you have your phone app, and then you just click on that. We're here, and you can have your contacts on this side, and then you have your numbers that you can manually press in and hit this button and you can call somebody. Pretty standard. That's where you have your contacts all right there. Then you have, of course, the Play Store. Then your radio. I already showed, showed you that one. Then the Spotify app. Uh, and then your steering wheel controls. And you hit that. And I already have them pre-programmed in here. Uh, you have the volume both volumes, mute, power, next, play, previous, home, back, answer, reject, all that stuff. And how you do that is to program this, is you hit the start button, very easy. Hit that start button, and then it prompts you to select a function, which I already did. Let's say it's this one right here. You want volume, you hit the volume, and then you go over here to your 
controller and whatever which one it was it was volume plus you hit volume plus and then the little check mark right here will come on and that is how you know that you programmed your vehicle then we have t-link 5 which is your carplay screen looks like then of course you can access your videos by this button right here and i showed you that before then we have ways and anybody that's used ways this is how you connect to it Then of course you have the YouTube app, like I showed you before. And then as the last thing, you got this where you can pull down the screen and access your volume, your brightness, the Wi-Fi that connection that you're on, data, equalizer, screensaver, settings, suspension close, menu, clear memory, screenshot, and restart. And then you can go further and all your apps are shown here. So anyway, guys, that's a look at what MEI Auto Head Unit has to offer, and it is awesome. Their customer service, I must admit, is fantastic. I had a question, so I wanted to get a hold of them, and they were spot on. I could email, I could text, and even though they weren't in my time zone, they were always there for me. So if you want a good head unit, this is the one. I'll put a link to their website down below so you can grab yourself one and go ahead and if you like this content like subscribe and share the crap out of this channel because uh, i worked hard on this and you're gonna love this stereo so thanks for watching guys and i will catch you on the next one peace